Okay, let's try to jump to a question from Keir, who's in the call about COVID, which we haven't really even talked about. I'm always thrilled to say. Keir, if you can unmute yourself uh, uh, and switch on your camera. Uh, there we go. Keir, uh, I'll let you put your question in, Naomi. Hi, thanks. Uh, my question is, given that in the rest of the UK, especially like in England, they have a timetable for unlocking, albeit they do still go by data, not dates, or so they say, in Northern Ireland, do you not think that there's a very real possibility that because we have none of this timeline, despite being having similar infection levels and similar levels of vaccination to the rest of the UK, that businesses in England and Scotland are able to open up whilst we're still in full lockdown here in Northern Ireland? Least of all hairdressers care, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. My hair hasn't been cut since 2019, so I'm getting like Rapunzel at this stage. Look, I would love to see things open more quickly. And just to be blunt about it, I would love to see us in that position. But equally, I never want to be back here again. So when we make this decision to move forward, I want it to be sustainable and I want it to continue to move in that direction. I do not want it to be one step forward, two steps back. We got ourselves in an awful bind last year. The executive was in shambles um, around trying to get the lockdown unpicked and trying to have the relaxations. We were lobbied heavily to do things for one sector and not another. Things became a tug of war between health um, and the economy. And it was all really unhelpful. We gave indicative dates and people took them like gospel, like they'd been handed down on tablets of stone and then planned to those dates. And then were outraged when we couldn't meet those dates, even though it was driven by the best of intentions. So in truth, I don't think we can give dates. I think what we can give people is honesty. We don't control the virus at the minute. It controls us. We are rolling out the vaccine programme in Northern Ireland faster than anywhere else in these islands. So we have, I think, an optimistic opportunity. I think we've got to focus on conditions. And we've set out in the Pathways document what the conditions are that we're trying to meet in order that we can move forward. But, 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 but Naomi, I'm glad, I mean, the pathway document. I'm, I'm glad right. this time we focused actually in relaxations. We prioritised people, not businesses and not money and not all the other things, but people. Because, you know, I think a lot of us just really want to see our friends and family and haven't been able to do that for a long time. And I think by doing that and education, those are the two things we've prioritised so far. I think we will then test the water and see how that goes. We've already seen in other places where schools have returned, for example, that the, the, the um, infection rates start to rise again. So we have to be cautious. We have to move cautiously. And we can't give people false hope. But I think we can give them real hope. But the vaccination no, programme is going so well. OK, I mean, you say you're not going to give dates, and I think a lot of people actually understand where you're coming from there. But you said it was based on, on data and driven by conditions. Why does the pathway document not say, for example, you know, what the R number needs to be or, you know, what the capacity of hospitals need to be? It, because it's not that no simple. data in it. It's, it's not that simple. I mean, this is part of the difficulty. This is not an exact science. It, it just isn't. If people want us to be able to say at a certain point when these two graphs come, I mean, I, I worked as an engineer for years and I'm used to data and evidence and how to weigh it. it it's an inexact science. What we're doing is trying to balance the harms that the, the cause, because lockdown causes harm. We know that. We know the impact that lockdown is having on people's mental health, physical health and other things. So lockdown causes a degree of harm and then the pandemic causes a degree of harm. And what we're trying to do is balance that and to find the right point at which to move. And there's no perfect solution. So it is about weighing things up and saying, well, at this stage, we think there is sufficient headroom for us to be able to do this. If things continue in this direction, we'll also be able to add other things on. But we're also relying on things like how quickly do we roll out the vaccine? Well, we're waiting to see how quickly we can get the actual volumes of vaccine through. We're also dependent a bit on the weather because we know for a fact that last summer, um, outside the flu season, we saw a major dip in the spread of COVID. So all of those factors that we're weighing up, we're having to we're having to juggle. And it's not as simple as saying that we're not, we are looking at the evidence, we get the evidence every week, but it's not a straightforward medical decision. It's a societal decision. And I think that's it's informed by the medical evidence, but it isn't a medical decision, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, 